Hello everyone. Welcome to problem 2.8 of David Griffith's Electrodynamics. Let us jump right in. <clears throat> so, it wants us to use our result from problem 2.7 to find the field inside and outside a solid sphere of radius r that carries a uniform volume charge density of rho. And it wants us to express our answer in terms of the total charge on the sphere q and then to draw a graph of the magnitude of E as a function of the distance from the center. So we know from problem 2.7 that if you are outside of the sphere, then all of the um, charge on the surface of the sphere acted as if it was contained at the center of the sphere, and the electric field outside of the hollow sphere was just uh, that of a point charge and just depended on your distance from the center of that sphere. Let's just say this is the surface. We, we have, it's a hollow sphere and all the charges contained on the surface. If you were inside of um, the sphere, right? So this is the radius R, big R. And let's say you are right here, little r. Any um, charge that was outside of, you know, you can kind of think of creating a, another smaller sphere of radius where you are, little r. And any charge outside of this radius here, it doesn't contribute to your field at all. Um, only charge that is in t interior to where you are um, contributes to the electric field here. And so we're going to use this fact from 2.7 to construct a solution for 2.8. And so now consider that this is not a hollow sphere, but rather a solid sphere with charge uniformly distributed throughout the entirety of the sphere interior and, um, and everything um, with a uniform volume density of rho. So again, if we are outside of the sphere, right, if we are outside of the whole sphere, then all that matters is the charge that's interior to the sphere um, or interior to where we are. So if, if we're considering a point R Let's call this like r prime, right? If we're considering some point r prime out here, and you can kind of think of creating a big, you know, other sphere uh, surface outside of here, all that matters is the um, charge contained within your own radius, you know, less than your radius, and that's what contributes to your electric field. Anything outside of it doesn't, but there is nothing outside of where we are. There's no charge outside of where we are, so. Um, um, all that matters is the total charge contained in here, which is, um, you know, just big Q or the, the total charge Q on the, you know, inside of this uh, sphere. So for, you know, R greater than the radius of the sphere, the electric field still acts as if it's just a point charge. It'd just be one over four pi epsilon naught. There's essentially no difference than, than what um, our, the situation we had before. Um, in that case, all the charge was just on the surface. In this case, all the charge is sort of distributed throughout the volume itself. Um, but uh, essentially, it makes no difference as long as it's interior to where we are. Um, that's all that matters. And so we can just call the total charge uh, big Q and then over, you know, little r squared or whatever, our distance from the center, and we'll just say in the r hat direction. And so this is the electric field um, for any points outside of this uh, solid sphere. Now let's find the electric field for points um, r that are less than the radius of the sphere, so interior to the solid sphere. And this is gonna be a little different. So if you're interior to this sphere, then, what's interior to where you are. So all of this charge out here, let's just say this is the radius we're considering, all this charge out here that's contained in this part of the sphere does not contribute at all to the electric field produced at this point. Only the charge contained within this radius. 4 thirds pi r cubed. So that's the volume. Um, that is the volume of the... Um, this inner sphere here, are where we are. Uh, that's the volume of all the space contained within this sphere. And then we just multiply that by 
um, the charge density rho, right? So rho is just the charge per unit volume. And so this would give us the total charge contained in our little sphere here. So we multiply the charge density by the volume contained here. And we can express rho in terms of the total charge Q because rho is just the charge per unit volume. So we'll have, we'll have 4 thirds pi r cubed still. And then rho is just the total charge big Q divided by the total volume. So 4 thirds pi big R cubed. And so we have a bunch of cancellations and all we have left is um, Q R cubed over capital R cubed. All right, so we have um, essentially this is the charge contained within our um, uh, little uh, uh, sphere here of radius little r. So now the electric field is just 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. I'll say Q internal over um, R squared. So by Q internal, I mean the charge internal to our our radius R here, and which is what we calculated here. All right, so we'll just plug that in. So that's one over four pi epsilon naught. And then Q internal is capital Q. And then we are gonna have R cubed, but we have R squared on the bottom. So we'll just have R on the top and divided by the radius cubed. And this is still gonna be directed radially away, uh, just due to symmetry purposes. And this is the electric field interior to the solid sphere. All right, so that was pretty short and sweet. Um, we didn't have to do any crazy calculations or integrals like we did for problem 2.7. Um, that's why it asked us to use our results for problem 2.7 to sort of tease out what we could, um, you know, how we could sort of construct what the field's going to look like for the situation. Because you can think of a solid sphere as just essentially built as built out of um, an infinite amount of shells, you know, starting from the origin and just adding a shell on top of each shell um, prior to it until you get to your desired radius. So that's essentially how we treated this problem. And real quick, um, I'll just you know draw a quick sketch of a graph of the electric field in this case. So you can see here that the electric field um, interior to the sphere is linearly dependent on your radius r. However, when you um, get out of the sphere, when you when you're out of the radius of the sphere, then the electric field is um, dependent on 1 over r squared. So real quick, um, I'm not really going to ignore, I'm just going to ignore the constants for now. Um, and we'll just start at the origin. Um, really, your starting point would depend on, you know, the values of 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught and your radius. But for now, just I just want to show you the shape of the graph. It doesn't um, really, it's just where you start on the y-axis depends on some of those constants and stuff. But we'll just start from the origin. And the shape of the graph, well, when you're interior, so this is um, the strength of the field E on this axis, the magnitude of E, and this is your distance R away. So from the origin, um, you're still interior to the sphere, and so uh, it just linearly increases, the electric field strength linearly increases as you move away from the origin, and we'll just say it now at this point, this is the, um, sorry, this is the radius r, so this is the radius of the sphere. So any point will uh, pass this, you're outside of the sphere. And so then it just drops off as 1 over r squared, just like, uh, just like that. So this is sort of the shape of the electric field um, and all of space um, for this situation. All right, so I hope that kind of makes sense. And uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to drop me a like. Um, if you have any comments or feedback, um, anything I could do better. And if you're new here, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more content and more solutions on the way. 
Um, I'm slowly working through this textbook, but um, I do plan to do every problem. Um, if there is a problem that you really, really want me to do, just let me know and drop it in the comments below. Maybe I'll get to it um, before, you know, maybe I'll get to it early. All right, guys. Um, that's it for me, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.